Okay guys, today we're gonna do a little bit different flavored style video. As you can see, I've got the knuckle off of this side of my Jeep. I'm gonna be replacing the ball joints. And when I'm looking at doing something for the first time, and I bet a lot of you can resonate with this, it's really frustrating watching YouTube videos that are 40 minutes, an hour long to try to learn how to do a job if it's your first time. Now I've done ball joints a million times. I'm gonna be replacing the lower ball joints and upper ball joints with some Grand Cherokee ball joints because I'm doing a big brake conversion. So I'm gonna make a very concise video showing you guys at this point how to remove the ball joints and install new ones. So let's get into it. I wanted to interrupt this video for a second just to let you guys know a couple different ways that you can support me here at the channel because without you spreading the word, sharing videos with your friends, liking, subscribing, engaging in the comments, this channel will go nowhere. So the first way that you can do this is non-monetarily. I'm not gonna beg you guys for money, but you can share this video. It costs you nothing. You can hit that thumbs up and give me a like. You can also subscribe to the channel and that I appreciate dearly helps with the algorithm, helps with everything else going on, helps people see my videos. If you like what I have going on and you wanna see more, it's a great way to do it. Another way is to hop on the website in the description. I'll put a link down there. You can grab some Overland tees. These have a picture of my Jeep and a mountainscape sunset, one of our fireboxes, and it just says destined to move. We've got these in tees in a couple different colors, also hoodies available, plus a lot of other apparel down in the description. There's a link down there. I'm also gonna put a link to my businesses down there. So if you have needs for outdoor products or anything like that, check those links down in the description. If you are blessed enough to spend some money at our companies, you're gonna buy some American made quality goods gonna help us out, help my entire team out, which then in turn helps us make more videos, but that's enough of your time. Let's get back into the video. Okay, when it comes to the removal aspect, we're gonna do the upper ball joint first, and then we're gonna do the lower ball joint. To remove the upper ball joint, there's two pieces that I use with my ball joint press. If you don't know what this is, you can rent these at AutoZone, you can rent these at many other hardware places, or you can purchase them. This is the tool you're going to need do not fall for the trap of trying to hammer these things out. It gets really ugly really fast. So I'm gonna use this little guy right here. To slip over this on the bottom. We're gonna push up, big collar on top. We're gonna to push this ball joint out for you guys. All right, getting this set up, we're gonna put that little collar on top. It has to be bigger than the ball joint so you can push it up through. We're gonna put this little retainer right there. We're gonna take our little piece here, get everything extended out. Slide that guy over and then thread this guy all the way down. Again, we're gonna be pushing straight up. I know this whole thing's gonna rotate that way. All right, so that's all set up. Now we gotta get our breaker bar. I got my safety glasses on. Now we're gonna just crank this guy down. And it does take quite a bit of force usually. Oh, there it already started moving, so that one's good. Sometimes you'll hear them snap, sometimes you'll hear them pop. That's normal. Just always wear your safety glasses because you're playing around with some high pressure sometimes when you're doing ball joints. Take that off. Done. Okay, so for the bottom one, we're gonna use just this push part on this tool on the ball joint press push down on the top of the lower ball joint. We're gonna use a little bit smaller collar, see if this will focus for you guys. And then we're just gonna use a little cap with a hole in the bottom so that the, see if it'll focus, there we go. So that the ball joint stud can actually push straight through. And we'll get to pushing. Okay, so getting this guy set up, this is, the collar that's gonna go there. This plate here with the hole in the bottom so that the stud can pass through is gonna go like that. Gonna fish this whole thing up through. And I'm just gonna push down directly on the top of that ball joint, just like that. All right, let's get to cranking. All right, and it's moving. 
I sort of remember replacing these maybe a year or two ago, probably two years ago, two and a half years ago. So these ball joints are still tight, but because I'm going with the Grand Cherokee knuckles and big brakes, I want to put the Grand Cherokee ball joints in. All right. And there we have the ball joint. All right, the next step we're going to do use a little bit of brake clean here. We're gonna clean out the openings for both of those ball joints. Just use a little rag or a brush or something. Just make sure you get all the junk out. Make sure there's no metal burrs or anything that's gonna hold you up when you press the new ones in. You don't have to take a ton of time, but you should definitely make sure everything's feeling good before you just press those ball joints in. Okay, for the install of this lower ball joint, I'm just gonna use the same piece that I had already used that allows the stud to pass through. It's pushing on the body of the ball joint real nice. And then all I have to do on the knuckle is have something large enough for the ball joint to pass through, something like that. And then we will use this top piece like that. So we're gonna push it in from the, from the bottom. Again, doing the bottom ball joint first. So let me show you what that looks like. And we're going to make sure that grease fitting is facing forward per the instructions. All right, now we're gonna double check and make sure everything's seated the way it needs to be. It's very important to make sure that you're starting these things square so they don't go in crooked. Yep, good to go. Okay, so now for the top one, I've already got it in position. I've got everything squared up. I'm just gonna use a little cap that is in the ball joint press kit. Stick that on top, we're gonna push straight down on the body of that ball joint. Okay, we're gonna try something here. Typically on the bottom, I have some adapters in these kits that look like this, but they're not quite as tapered. This one's not working for the upper, it's just slipping and rotating. And when I use just a pipe piece like this, it's not square. As you can see, it's kind of tilted. So I'm just gonna put this little washer right in there after I'm set up. I don't recommend doing this. I just can't find the correct tool at this point and I need to get this job done. So we're just gonna use that same bottom piece like we've already used. We just got a little cap on the top of the ball joint. I'm gonna fish everything up through here. Get it all lined up and set up. And then we're just gonna put that washer over here just to square it all up. Now that I have it mostly seated, we are just gonna push straight down on it just with this piece again.
you guys saw, pretty straightforward to install the upper lower ball joints. As I stated, I definitely don't recommend the washer method. This washer got pretty beat up. And that's sort of a hazard to have something go flying across the shop. Definitely recommend the right kind of fitting for the top here. It should just kind of slip over and have a cutout for that knuckle to get squared up on. I could not find my piece, so I made it work. Um, but it's in there square, lower ball joint, super easy. At this point, all you'd have to do is reinstall your knuckle, wheel bearing, your axle shaft, everything that you had to take apart to get to this point. But hope you guys found that helpful. I know, not really a super flashy video, but a lot of people like to over talk, overdo it. And I just wanted to boil this topic down into something very simple because I remember what it was like to do ball joints the first time, didn't know what to expect. Sometimes they're really hard to come out. Sometimes they come out easy like this. Sometimes you have to use a pipe on top of a breaker bar to get them out and you'll have a loud snap as soon as they pop loose. But ultimately it's not a super complex job. Biggest thing you need is that ball joint press. But if you found this video helpful, please subscribe to the channel. Check out the other videos that I have going on and I have a lot more coming up. Check back on my channel soon. You'll see a big break install in my XJ here. And I will walk you through what I did there and talk about why I'm doing the big break conversion on this diesel swap XJ. So guys, thank you for tuning in. I'll catch you guys in the next one.